Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbuble. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, well, we've got a few bubblings, actually, that relate to the new Zim 7.3, where we show some improvements to loading in a progress bar and a couple other kind of cool things. All right, so let's dig into some code and see what's up with Zim. So we're looking at Zim 7.3, and we come on down to the fit mode. Uh, we're taking a look at a frame with a load asset. So this is the traditional old way of loading assets, where we bring the frame in first, we wait for the ready event, and then if we want assets, we can load assets and wait for them to be complete, and then we code in here. So that's sort of a two-step process, and you can see the ends of those two steps, and sometimes that's a little bit tricky to describe to people who are first learning to have nested functions. It's like, ah, I mean, one day we've got to get used to that. But um, what we thought we could do is put the load assets right inside of the frame. So uh, that we did in a previous version, but we'll, we'll go over that again. However, what's new this time is a progress bar and indeed a progress parameter. So we've now turned the third parameter of load assets to a progress parameter. So the assets, the path, followed by the progress. And this can be either a waiter, we've had waiters before, new waiter, or a progress bar. So let's take a look at the default progress bar here. We, when we're complete, we'll load the big picture, uh, <laughs> the big picture, so to speak. All right, we'll take a look at this in a browser. Just paste in the URL and hit enter. Oh, well that came quickly. Let me try, it must've been in cache. I'll do a shift refresh. There it goes. And that is the, the default progress bar, this little round thing that fills up with green and then shows us the picture. There is also a, a bar, uh, which we'll show you, that uh, like a rectangle bar, and we'll show you that in a sec. Uh, but this is down with the load assets. Let's try doing something similar. We'll put the load, instead of down here, we'll put the load up inside of the frame. So I'm going to just uncomment that one, put that in. So now we're uh, loading the thing as before, but there's we're loading a sound and assets, and there is the the next parameter is the uh, either a loader or a waiter, and I'll show you that in a second. But uh, I'm going to uncomment down here as well. We're going to then play the sound and turn the frame color to green. Okay. Uh, a little bit about colors, I suppose, but be before we uh, get into colors, let's just pop up this one more time here. There's the waiter right there, so just a new waiter. Now, you can see that we're dealing with some colors here. There's light, dark, black. Uh, down here we had green. So in the past, that was frame.green, frame.green, and that was fine except when we didn't have a frame yet. Frame.green will still work, but if we didn't have a frame yet, so for instance, if we wanted to specify colors in here, such as green, you could do an HTML color, that's not a Zim color. And so we developed these things called frame, like on the frame called frame.green, and these are specific colors that relate to the Zim colors. Now I didn't I uh, initially thought that those would be just for me as I'm developing things in Zim, but it turns out that many people use the Zim colors, and so, um, hey, that's not the end of the world. Rather than hiding them on frame, I felt like guilty putting them in there. Well, it turns out they've been useful, but they're not useful right here, frame.green, because the frame hasn't been made yet, so we've not made the frame and stored it in a variable. So that means we have no access to it there. And so for a while, I went, all right, well, that's not the end of the world. We'll just say uh, frame.color equals frame.green here. And then there's an outer color too. So frame.outer color equals whatever. And so I started doing that in the templates. I put them in the templates. Hey, if you want to do colors, now we have easy access to the, the frame colors because we're inside the frame. And therefore, the colors weren't so important uh, up here because we could just add them right here. So when we introduced the loading, it was decided, well, hey, that's all right. What we'll do is we'll put the loading, all this stuff, before the colors, because we're using the colors down here. And it was like, 
Okay, that's great. But then, so th that handled the loading just fine. Now we've added this progress parameter where we can show, uh, the problem with um, putting the assets in up here in the frame is we have no stage yet. So if we wanna make a waiter, like up here, a waiter or, and show a waiter or now the new progress bar, we have no stage to show it in. So we, uh, that was why we didn't put loading in the frame in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're kind of like, okay, well, maybe what we can do is we can just pass in the waiter. Initially, when we first made the frame, I don't even think we had a waiter. So we didn't know we were going to be making these ready-made components for us. But now that we have used the waiter for a while and everybody's using a waiter, it's sort of like, oh, okay, you know, that's handy. Maybe we could also provide a progress bar and pass those in as parameters. And that way, Zim, when it makes the frame, as soon as it gets the stage, it puts the waiter, whatever you put here, the progress bar of the waiter, it puts it on the stage uh, for us. And then it continues to wait for the assets to load. So, hey, that's, that's really easy. Now, when it comes to specifying a waiter, one of the things I like to do is specify a color. Or if we've got these progress bars, we want to specify the colors. And those colors, the frame dot colors, the zim colors, weren't available up here. They're only available inside here. So uh, the answer is let's store those colors, which have turned out to be handy, right on zim. So now we have zim.blue, zim.green, instead of frame.blue, frame.green. Frames will still leave around for backwards compatibility, and it's no big deal. These are very light. So now they're all stored on zim. One cool thing about being stored on the zim namespace is as of 5.5, you do not need to put zim before. And, which means we're kind of lucky. We can just put black. We can just put, uh, we're, oh, I had some other ones in here too. Uh, we can just say green and dark. Except I didn't want green. What do I want there? How about light? Uh, light, by the way, is a very light gray, like a CCC. Uh, there's also lighter, there's darker, there's black, white, and then there's the various colors of the rainbow sort of thing. And a couple other handy ones too, like um, faint, which is the alpha, the lightest alpha that you can interact with. Uh, you can hardly see it, but if you set it to frame.clear, or now just clear, that is uh, no color at all, no alpha, and you can't actually interact with it, or can you see it? But it's good for things like the background color of a circle, as long as you don't mind not being able to click on that. In, inside of the circle. So, um, cool. So now we can just put those colors there. So that's a little bit about colors. In other words, we don't have to say frame back green anymore. We can just say green. We don't need the quotes. If you have the quotes, that's an HTML green. Without the quotes, that's calling a zim green or a frame dot green. Alrighty. So there. Now, uh, let's see this work, huh? Let's check out the waiter. So this is a traditional waiter being passed in now as a new parameter. Oh, the parameters got shuffled a little bit. It was, uh, because I wasn't using the colors there, and was using them down here, um, they weren't as important, so we put the loading first. Now that we realize we have to specify colors outside, and we have access to um, the color, frame.colors, uh, we've <laughs> swapped them again. So my apologies, I hate, um, I hate it when parameter orders change and we know that that's not good. We did go through just one last version of Zim with the, co with the colors coming after the loading, but now uh, because of, as I've just explained, we've moved them back into in front and no longer do we have to do that stuff anymore. I mean, you can, but it's just as easy now to put our Zim colors right, right in here. So there's the progress parameter. We're going to see it now with the traditional waiter. Let's save that up and upload it. And we'll come back to here and do a shift, oops, shift refresh. I missed it, I think shift refresh. There's the waiter. And when the sound comes in, you're probably hearing sound right now. When the sound comes in, uh, the waiter goes away. So isn't that neat? That's very cool. Let's try it with the progress bar. So now instead of a waiter, we'll comment out the waiter there. We're going to take a look at the progress bar in a little bit uh, more detail. But here, here's a default progress bar almost. Uh, 
Right, we've already seen the default circular progress bar earlier. That's if you don't put any parameters. Now just let's check the bar type of rectangle. Uh, by the way, the parameter type often turns into a property, and type as a property is not a good property name. It's a, like a, a, a JavaScript reserved word or something like that. So I don't know. I can't remember if that's... Oh, no, I know what it was. Um, we've now, uh, the types of all of the objects, of the Zim objects, are their names. So if you ask for new circle and then ask for the circle.type, it will say circle with a capital C quotes. And that, that can help you identify various objects by the type. So for the parameter names, we no longer call the parameter names type anything. Any, anywhere where the type, we've had to change it to a bar type. <laughs> you can just see up here in Pizzazz. Pizzazz is sort of a different system, so we, we do have a type there. But oh, consistency, I tell you. Uh, we're going to take a look at Pizzazz in, a, in the next bubbling, because there's a new Pizzazz, Pizzazz 3, to make these patterns. But uh, for now, let's just uh, take a look at a traditional rectangle progress bar. So we save that up and upload it. And we refresh here, or shift refresh. And I have a feeling I know what's happened there. Well, maybe it's just playing. No. Uh, my FTP has been having a problem. Packages, remote FTP, disconnect, and uh, connect again. It's hanging for some reason, so I've got to deal with that F1. And let's see what we got now. Re shift refresh. Shift refresh. Still not? Maybe an error. F12. What do we got? Reference waiter is not defined. Oopsie daisy. So I had nothing to do with that. Uh, we commented out the waiter. And down here in the frame call, we're no longer using the waiter. We are using this bar. So I'm going to save that. Upload it. Don't blame my FTP and shift refresh. There it is. Look, a bar. Cool, huh? And then the sound plays if we didn't have it muted, etc. So check that out. There it is. By the way, um, the progress reaches 100 before the complete fire. So there's a bit of a delay in there. If you don't like that delay, there's there's actually a... So what we've done is we close the bar once the progress finishes, but uh, the CreateJS preloader seems to have a bit of a delay until, I don't know, something else processes. And uh, usually it's not uh, that noticeable, but there is a parameter of the progress bar that you can choose to close the progress bar on complete rather than once the progress ends. But then what happens, the progress bar fills up and stays filled for a little bit and then goes away. All right, uh, shall we just take a peek at that pattern? All right, what we're doing is we're gonna change the color of the progress bar from the default green, and we're gonna set the backing to this pattern, which is made with pizzazz. So we save that, and we upload, and we refresh here. Run up. Cool, huh? Nice. So we refresh again, see that? Isn't that nice? That's an animated pattern in behind the progress bar. So why don't we do that? Let's just continue on with the progress bar in this next example, which doesn't require uploading. Let's just open this in a browser. There it is. So this is a uh, hard-coded uh, or hand-coded or whatever, um, uh, an example progress bar. And let's see what we're doing. So we're making a pattern. Now there's another one that I want to look at called patterns, but we'll save that for another what's bubbling. That, that'll that be all the pattern size. So let's not concentrate so much on the pattern and what's going into there, but let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with the progress bar. So there's a bar type, and if we take that away, it defaults to a circle. There's the color of the bar itself and the color of the backing. So both of those are the same, which uh, was for this pattern. And then there's also a pattern. So let's not put in the pattern. We better change the, the backing color. Now, no longer do we need to say this. We can just say, hey, let's make the backing uh, pink. And let's make the color of the bar blue. So uh, nice. There's some other things we'll look through. And here's the bar being shown. So if you say bar.show, now that's if you're manually using the bar. Usually you would just make the bar and pass it into the load assets or pass it into the frame in the progress parameter spot. 
but you can use the bar manually if you want, and then you would adjust the percent of the bar inside something. So here we are running an interval, and so every interval we just take the count of the interval, and um, that carries on to a percent. When the percent is 100, the bar will automatically close. So we save that, and let's view that again, a refresh. And there's blue and pink. Now note that there's a little border there, so if you don't want a border, well, we can make the border bigger. There's a border of 10. Oh, that's a big pink border with a pink background. What color was the border? Uh, border color op op automatically is the same color as the thing, but let's not do that. Let's make a border of zero. So a border of zero and refresh, and now we get no border on that. If you want no corner, and refresh that, then there's a square bar. Kind of cool. Uh, there's shadows. Oh, there's labels. So if we say that we're loading, there's the loading message. You can also load with the uh, put that above if you want. There's also a percentage, so we'll turn the percentage on to true. You don't need the label for that, uh, so there's it'll give you that it's uh, loading there. Um, and there's the fast close that we were talking about. Uh, there's also padding on the bar, so we have no border, but if we add a padding of three, then it looks something like this. Where, oh, then we're back to that. Although that affects patterns in different ways, but uh, yeah, that's so. And, and then, like I said, you can um, provide a pattern. That's probably not all of the things with the bar, but you can see that you got that. And once again, if you go, if you drop back to the default, which is circle, then you get something that looks like this. Ooh, that's got way too much uh, padding or something's going on there. Backing color, border color, backing color, pink. Surprised me, too much padding. Let's check that out. Not sure when it happened. Uh, corner, oh, corner, no, corner zero shouldn't have fixed it. Border width, uh, I don't think so. Anyway, let's see what we got going on there. Just look thin for some reason. There is pink with, um, oh, right, uh, the actual. Uh, border size is what makes that. So where we did the border width of zero, that means we had no border width. So when we say a border width of say 20, like that, that's what's making our outer uh, ring really fat. So there's, it's the border width that is, is the ring by default. So there's a, like a fat loading ring. You might want more contrast. We can just say dark there and you've got blue uh, blue ring oh maybe not today drac dark and refresh and there's a dark backing with a with the blue ring nice huh all right so i think that's uh good that my friends is uh, what's been bubbling at zim 7.3 to get the background we got to go to pizzazz and that will be the next bubbling that we take a look at is our new pizzazz 3 with various patterns and indeed animated patterns that can be used in things like the progress bar and the back backgrounds buttons and things like that i'm inventor dan zen dr abstract here at Zim, ZimJS.com. Uh, please, if this is, if you're just watching this and you haven't tried it out, come try out Zim. Obviously, if you've gone this far, you're pretty interested in this stuff. If you have tried out Zim, let others know. Start building things. Come on into our Slack channel, ZimJS.com slash Slack, and talk to us. Say hello if you haven't already. Ciao. Have a great night.